Hi everybody, uh, my name is Kevin Livingston. I'm a postdoc at the University of Colorado. Uh, I work closely with Larry Hunter and, uh, and Karen Bersport. Um, I Since these are supposed to be short talks, this is uh, really just going to be a commercial about uh, some of the stuff that we have going on and some of the projects that I'm interested in. Uh, and uh, there's a lot more detail behind all this, so if you want to know more um, about any of it, please just ask. Um, so, uh, the bottom line here, I think, for most of us is that we're trying to help biologists solve biological questions. Um, they're trying to understand data in terms of phenotypes, diseases, pathways, protein complexes, functions, etc. Um, note that when biologists ask these questions or frame these questions, they're not talking about, I need to understand my system in terms of keg pathways. They're saying, I need to understand what pathways are actually going on under the scenes here. They're not concerned about uniprop proteins. They're concerned about proteins. Um, unfortunately, uh, the current state of the art for most of our tools and systems and everything um, is just kind of this disparate view of everything. There's you know, a million different sources of pathway data. There's phenotype data over here, there's various different ontologies for representing things that the curated databases aren't necessarily always linked to. And so I, I think, uh, uh, and, and I don't think this is a very new message to this community, but I, I think it's important to kind of reiterate that, um, you know, we've heard people talk about things being siloed and um, set apart. And uh, so what we're interested in doing uh, and uh, and have begun and is uh, start to build uh, basically a large knowledge base of biology, uh, again with a goofy acronym. I, don't, I, I haven't read that article, so maybe I should find it, uh, but we, we call it Kebab uh, for the knowledge base of biology. Uh, but what we've begun doing is uh, representing the records that are in these knowledge bases as information content entities. Um, we're doing this explicitly because uh, our users think that it's important to be able to track things back to the prominence. Um, and, and so by being able to do that, we can track and you know, connect things later. But kind of the next step is to normalize uh, the biomedical entities. And, and the, this is not, uh, I should say, not identifiers, not identifiers. But um, it, it's not about just getting all the identifiers right, but it's, like, you know, it's identifying that there is one human gene here that might happen to be referenced by you know, this HGNC code or this entree gene code, um, et cetera. Or that there's you know, one pathway or disease over here. You know, and it's not a keg pathway, but it's actually the biological pathway. Or it's not a, you know, a, any number of other pathways. So it's the, the, uh, the, the databases should not own the biology, you know, the biomedical reality, right? Um, and then the next step is to kind of begin to axiomatize all this and convert it into biomedical knowledge. Um, and we've heard about a couple projects here that are um, moving in that direction. So I think um, anything that we can do as a community to work towards unifying all this information is, is definitely a good thing. Uh, because that's where we really want to be operating, right, is with, you know, biological information, not on you know, a million disparate databases. I don't want to have to write my query differently just because I want to make sure I include entree gene results or whatever. Um, but again, uh, in our lab, there are kind of two sets of users that, that, are, uh, that we're you know, trying to build this underlying uh, representation to support. So uh, uh, I guess the, the first, in, Closer to my heart is uh, NLP and text mining work. Um, that's my background, is uh, using large knowledge bases to drive language understanding um, and then to be able to produce new results that you could then feed back um, into the large knowledge base. Um, kind of the uh, second major set of stuff that's going on uh, in Colorado is uh, visualization and reporting systems, uh, which Larry was to refer to as 3R systems. Um, but so the goal of being able to produce a unified knowledge base could then, you know, try and support all of these projects without having to uh, 
Anyway, they can feed off each other. It's basically the idea. Um, so I guess now, I'm sorry. Uh, so moving on to kind of the two things that uh, I guess I'm here interested in uh, talking about is uh, knowledge representation and annotations. Uh, so there's a lot of different work and tools out there that represent annotations. There's you know different catalogs of various annotations. There's Go annotations. There's you know only annotate things. You know take your pick. Um, and uh, in, in by and large, most of these annotation tools are, are taking this kind of I need to assign one term to one you know thing, one stretch of text, one gene record, one whatever. Um, and, and I think that's useful and good. Uh, but uh, we also need to be able to represent more complex annotations. So uh, sets, sets of statements uh, that, that form coherent, you know, you want to be able to annotate a relation, not just a concept. Um, so, and that's something that we're working on uh, in our lab, uh, both in the annotation of uh, CRAFT, which is a large corpus of uh, 97 documents that are being annotated with, um, I, I, I don't even want to know how many ontologies, uh, Mike Bate is working on that uh, primarily, uh, but it's uh, they're being so these same 97 documents are being annotated with phenotype information, uh, gene protein information, go terms. Uh, they're also being syntactically annotated, uh, so um, it's very heavily marked up corpus. Uh, but we also want to annotate the relations between things. So just because you see the word vertebrate over here and pigmentation over there, you don't want just kind of this bag of ontology terms annotated on there. You want to be able to know what the relationship is, you know, that's pigmentation of vertebrates, not just, you know, pigmentation showed up. Um, so, uh, and, and we're also, again, concerned about the provenance of these annotations. So being able to build annotations from other annotations and, and trace where every little part came from um, so that then when you get onto more advanced NLP systems, uh, it, not only can you debug it, but you can actually ascertain where the information came from. If there's problems, you know, you know which part failed. Uh, and uh, finally, I, I guess uh, this kind of echoes some of the other comments that we've been hearing today, is uh, just thinking more about moving towards uh, what we in our lab colloquially refer to as bio world, right? So getting to get into these representations of biomedical entities. So agreeing on URIs is only part of the problem, right? Then, you know, it comes to steps for agreeing on ontologies, or at least unifying these ontologies so that we know when there's a relation inserted somewhere that um, we have some notion of what it means. Uh, but if we want to get to real interesting uh, problems, uh, things like generalizations and defaults and supporting and conflicting statements that are being uh, housed in the same uh, knowledge base are important to think about. So uh, when, uh, when biologists are forming arguments and when we're building tools to support them, uh, you know, it, it's not necessarily the case that there'll be one answer, right? There might be two or three. And you want to know which claims and which documents support um, one side versus the other. And so being able to tease that apart, trace the provenance, and reason them coherently with conflicting uh, knowledge is, I think, uh, very important. Uh, so I, I just want to thank the organizers and all of you for letting me be here, and uh, my colleagues in Colorado, and the NLM for funding me in part for everything. So, thanks. Scientific discourse uh, task force. 